Welcome back on the AM show. You know how we do it. And uh, we started you off on a wonderful note, Sweetie Abochi uh, taking charge. Now that we've served you the news right now, we'll be serving you the news review. And you know it's always brought to you courtesy of Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic. If you find us talking a lot about the prostate, among other issues, is because of how potent a threat they can be. Vital organs in your body, yet they can do some things to you. You know that King Charles is himself grappling with uh, some of those issues. Though uh, the UK is being both transparent and opaque, so you can say translucent uh, with some of the information. But let me introduce you, if you've never heard of them, Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic. And what they're offering you, two things for free, gratis. Prostate screening, fertility screening. The first or the former, if you're a man, the latter, if you're a woman. And uh, you can reach out to them at any of their branches. Here in Accra, they are located at Spintex, opposite the Shell signboard. There's Kumasi Kronumabwe here behind the Angel Educational Complex. There's Takradi Energy State. That's where they can be found. Tema Community 22, Techiman Hanswa, and Esiama in Zama. Their call lines 0244-867-068 or 0274-234-321. Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic, the end to chronic disease. And the start of the news review, we're joined by finance analyst um, from far, far away, though he's Ghanaian, Dr. Wisdom Dugbe joins the conversation. Um, good morning. Good morning, Ben. Thanks for having me again. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having breakfast um, with us. Yes, uh, still a lot has happened since the last time we had an interaction just about a week ago. Are there any pertinent matters you've followed that you'd like to share your thoughts on? So let me lay a foundation for you. You do know that um, labor, organized labor, is, is posing a threat of a demonstration on February the 13th. The umbrella body, the TUC, and uh, many of the components saying they will not work. They will demonstrate on February the 13th. Why? Two things. One has to do with the 15% uh, tax or VAT to be imposed on VAT. Now, some suggest that cabinet has met and decided not to go along with it. Nana, Nana B of the MPP spoke vehemently against it, which was a bit of a surprise. Uh, but we've not got any formal information to that effect. And some of these groupings are saying once they don't get that, they will still go ahead and demonstrate. There's also... Apart from them, um, yes, traders, exporters, importers, and the talk of an eco-levy or emissions levy, where depending on what vehicle you're using, right down from motorbikes to the highest um, uh, vehicles in terms of their CC, you'd be paying anything from 75 CDs to upwards of 300 CDs. It's left many scratching their heads, worried, but government also says, we're trying to meet IMF regulations or stipulations. Um, it's one of the matters you could talk on, but I'll give you two minutes to share your thoughts and then we get into the papers. Thank you once again, Ben. Uh, if in, in, indeed the government has dropped the 15% is ECG VAT, there should be an official communication to that effect. You know, the last time I came through here, I called all these taxes, designer taxes, that place undue stress on the citizens and the businesses of this nation. I have continued to follow this a bit more about the impact of these um, exorbitant taxes in the nation. I have heard our companies in Ghana are beginning to reduce their workforce because of the excessive taxes on them. And another trend that is beginning to emerge, which equally troubles me, is how these taxes are forcing multinational companies to relocate all of portions of the operations offshore manufacturing there and, 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 and on that point the, on that yeah, point on, on that point if i may uh i don't know whether you've read price waterhouse coopers their report that actually corroborates what you're saying that a lot of entities have gone abroad so even the toothpaste and the likely things that the some of these entities i don't want to mention names would have made the the, the canned beverages they outsource them produce there like a place like Nigeria, and then they, they import into Ghana rather than produce here because of the cost of everything, just to corroborate what you're saying. Yeah, Ben, so how did we get here as a nation in the first place? How do we implement policies that don't seem to be in the best interest of the average Ghanaian? 
You know, my mind tells me that when production is shipped off offshore because of the heavy tax burden on businesses, those are jobs, Ben, that are getting exported out of the country. Worsening the already precarious unemployment situation in the country. This trend is guaranteed to worsen the nation's trade deficit because as more and more companies ship uh, production offshore, our imports could exceed the value of what we export, creating more balance of trade issues uh, for us. And also, as these companies send production overseas, we run the risk of losing some domestic industries because if domestic producers, that is the companies that remain here, if they cannot compete with the cheaper imported goods, they may be forced out of business. And this excessive taxation beats my mind, uh, Ben. Did the IMF force Ghana to implement all these taxes to qualify for a bailout? The answer is a big no. Our leaders, without regards to the plight of the poor, they are the ones that they proposed to the IMF that uh, they would achieve revenue targets through taxation. A nation that cannot prioritize the plight of uh, the vulnerable and implement policies that provide uh, equal opportunity, economic opportunity for the people. Isn't that concerning? We ought to be implementing policies that positively uh, impact the livelihoods of our people, not to overburden them some more. I call the emission tax in particular a scam that is perpetrated against the people of Ghana. You call the emissions tax a scam. Which, Why? Why? It should, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you in a, in a moment. I read comments about one of the MCs in the country justifying the emissions tax and even saying that it was passed by both MPP and NDC MPs, which gives them the authority, uh, the authority to the government to assess this tax on the, on the people for the development of the nation. I'll get into a bit of that later, but if it's positioned that this emissions tax would help the government collect enough money to invest in other areas of the economy, if his comments reflect the position of the government on this matter, then I'll argue that this is nothing but uh, a bait and switch, and quite frankly, very, very deceptive. Then emissions tax is levied mainly to solve challenges with climate change or environmental protection. You know, according to the Paris Accord, which seeks to re uh, reduce emissions, and manage rising temperatures of our planet. The countries that have signed on to this accord are expected to adopt these policies and regulations that will lead to reduce emissions and properly manage climate change. And so in some of these nations, emissions tax is used not to raise money for the government to construct roads and provide other amenities and all of that stuff. But these emission taxes are meant to discourage folks from buying or using uh, high emission vehicles and produce revenue for climate change initiatives. And emissions taxes are never meant to be a standalone solution in the fight against emissions. That's why I call it a scam here. You know, these emission taxes alone should never be uh, the sole solution to climate change solutions in the country. If the government is imposing emission taxes without corresponding policies to reduce emissions, I can almost assure you that it is an exercise in futility when it comes to reducing emissions. First, we need to understand that emissions taxes have very, very limited impact on the vehicles currently in the system. What do you expect folks with the gas guzzlers? In the US, we call, the we call them gas guzzlers. Do you expect them to sell them and buy electric vehicles? Look, a vehicle emissions tax should mainly be assessed on new vehicle purchases. You know, rationally speaking, that is the time you might be able to influence a vehicle buyer to consider the decision based on the tax that will be levied on the vehicle the person is trying to buy. All that I'm, I'm saying is this. It takes a bit of time for older high emission vehicles to be phased out of the system. And these vehicle owners might just continue to use them then until the high emission vehicles reach uh, uh, the end of their lifespan. It means that immediate impact on reducing emissions by uh, imposing emissions that is guaranteed to be very limited in the, in the case of Ghana. Now, I also think this is completely unfair and repressive tax. How is it that truck truck drivers or owners uh, who, uh, whose car runs on gas, right? We call it petrol in Ghana. 
This person pays the same emission tax as the owner of heavy duty off-road diesel trucks. Both of these vehicles are miles apart when it comes to uh, the emission levels. Then we also need to think about the effectiveness of this tax. Its effectiveness in reducing emissions in the nation. Look, that depends largely uh, on the availability and affordability of cleaner alternatives, such as electric or hybrid vehicles. How many EVs do we have in Ghana? And how many of the current vehicle owners uh, can afford to buy these EVs? So let's consider this. If this option or alternatives are not readily available or affordable to majority of vehicle owners, then this emission tax alone is most likely not going to get you to the right result of significantly reducing emissions. Unless the government is not operating in good faith and being disingenuous and using uh, this emission tax as a cover up uh, to mercilessly continue to, uh, their policy of more and more taxation instead of production. Is that, is that what you think is happening? That's what I think is happening. So this is I just, this is just a mere that. charade, another, another opportunity to tax the people into the ground. That's what you're saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's very clear to the average Ghanaian, right? You can see through that. And then another point I'll make quickly on this and then we can move on is, you know, if you think about it, it doesn't make sense from an environmental protection perspective at all. You know, while a task can influence consumer behavior, it may not be enough to completely change uh, driving habits or mode of transportation. So I asked this question earlier on, who would change their driving habit or sell their current vehicle and buy another one that does not attract emission tax? Very few, if any. Most people will drive their high, -end, uh, high emission vehicles and this tax will not necessarily change any of that at all. Finally, my last point on this, I promise, and I'll rest my case quickly. Uh, how would this be monitored and, for, and enforced? You see, there's a lot of tax experts and environmentalists, right? Climate activists and so on in the country. If the government is serious about reducing emissions, all of these stakeholders should be assembled to advise the government on a better approach instead of the broad daylight deception with only one purpose, to force the already struggling uh, vehicle owners to contribute to raise money for the government for purposes with little to no resemblance to environmental climate change initiatives. Well, thank you very much. Uh, that's been a pretty exhaustive, well, not completely exhaustive, but um, protracted analysis of the situation. We also know that we could, for example, take uh, advantage of carbon credits, uh, as some countries are doing. Look, I'm thinking that if government were thinking in a certain direction, I never said they were not thinking. I'm saying if they were thinking in a certain direction, right? We could harness carbon credits. A lot of these young people, it's easy money, basically. Get more trees on, um, like in the Amazon, plant more trees in certain designated areas. You get paid for carbon credits because we're losing forest cover across the world. Now, the more we try to regenerate this, um, uh, countries, especially in, in light of climate change, are compensated for that. It could be an easy way of getting resources and maybe taking, it may not be like from A to Z, but maybe convincing some of those, especially Mayad and Galamse, to move away and engage in some of these tree planting exercises. And guess what? They get paid for it because in the end, you get payments for the carbon credits and you can you can sell these carbon credits to other countries that pollute more that's that's the way it works but we're not thinking along these lines rather it will always be taxation 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 right now i don't know it may get to the point where even the pen you wield if you write a bit you'll be taxed um god save us mm. anyway Man, god indeed save us but i'll tell you this is the government is serious about this they need to bring folks together, right? Put folks together in a room. Let's deliberate. Have folks bring ideas. Right. You know, you don't just slap this on the people and expect it to, to stick, right? To your point, I think they need to do more consultation before they roll something like this out. All right. Uh, let's get going now. The Daily Graphic newspaper. Health alert. High-risk meningitis period. Reports sore throat, headache, fever, and bodily pains. God knows we've been through some of them. I mean... 
with the Hamilton and everything going on. Um, we are all struggling. I've, I've been up and down, up and down a bit. You go out, it's pretty hazy. And we've also been told that our air quality has hit the worst in the world at a point uh, recently. And it, it, the good thing, though, is that in the course of this week, it's going to taper off. But that, that's not a good sign. And what are the causes? Pollutants um, from different sources. Um, many sources are, are mentioned, including the likes of some places where some smelting is going on. Then our vehicles and, and what they, they present. There's also, I believe, the Hamilton itself uh, contributing about 5% of that. When you put all of it together, deadly cocktail. And you know what that does? Your lungs and other uh, parts of your body as you inhale. The quality of air you inhale also, if you didn't know this, it impacts even your lifespan. That's why there are some people, I was reading recently about this group of people in that town, because of the height, because of the quality of air, because they are eating everything fresh and all of that, most people in that town live to over a hundred years. So sometimes if, we, if people don't live that long, if life expectancy is that short, it's also because of all the pollutants. A cry is becoming a concrete jungle. And a place, a place like cantonments, which was never meant to be, it was supposed to be a, a kind of sparsely developed. Now because of politics and everything, people are buying land chock-a-block, putting up sky, skyscrapers, sky rises, and the whole place is turning into... I remember having a conversation once with this person who said that if we're not careful and no slur to the people of Nima, okay? I, I, I have many friends in those communities, but it may become because of, and when we mention Nima, it's because of how congested the place is without proper um, you know, outlets and all of that. But um, 28 Greater Accra MMDC sign performance contracts. There's Common Core Curriculum, Science Students to Skip Core Maths and Integrated Science. I see, that's interesting. And DVLA resolves online registration challenges, registers 25,101 vehicles. On the back page, Nigeria equal Egypt's AFCON record. What record is that? Nigeria will be playing in the semifinals of the Africa Cup of Nations for the 16th time, joining the pharaohs of Egypt at the top of the list of countries with the most appearances in the last four of the competition. Of course, the last time they downed Angola by a goal to nil. And then Bros revels in Bafana, Bafana's AFCON uh, progress. Let's see whether they can make the next hurdle. But getting into the stories now. <clears throat> Sore throat, headache, fever, general bodily pains, and others are symptoms of meningitis, which has a higher risk during the dry season. The public are therefore required to report to the nearest facility if they experience any of the above symptoms. Now, this is to ensure early diagnosis of possible cases of meningitis for appropriate and early treatment. The deputy director in charge of surveillance at the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Dennis Odai Lai, said the current dry season in the country had increased the risk of meningitis. Now, the GHS official said people were predisposed to contract meningitis in the dry season because some of the organisms that caused the condition already lived on their bodies or in their throats though they might not call, cause illness at that point. He explained that the dry season provided a good opportunity for the bacteria to enter the bloodstream and from there to enter the brain and cause meningitis. That's what makes meningitis even more dangerous. Gets into your brain and Charlie. Hmm. So please, if you all of a sudden come down with sore throat, headache, fever, bodily pains, don't assume it is the normal malaria. Eh? This one, COVID, so if you find any, <clears throat> just go, head straight to the hospital. Doc, let me, let me do uh, pages 13 and 16, and then I'll let you come in and just reflect on all of them. So all senior high schools, uh, school science students will no longer be required to study core and elective mathematics as separate examinable subjects from the 2024-2025 academic year. Instead, they will be required to take additional mathematics. The Director General of the National Council and Curriculum and Assessment, uh, Professor Edward Apia, has hinted. He further revealed that such science students would also no longer study integrated science because they were already studying pure science. 
This arrangement is similar to what existed in the country's educational system post-independence until the major reforms which replaced the middle school system with the junior high school and the secondary school system with the SHS system. Um, I don't know about this. I mean, we keep tinkering, tweaking with uh, this system. Um, I know back in the day, and we've seen it throughout the years, science students who have excelled in physics, biology, and the rest, and failed core mathematics, and done very poorly in integrated science. But um, who am I? I am not um, the generality of it. Additional mathematics and core mathematics are not the same. That's, that's to be clear. So I don't know. Uh, DVLA resolves online registration challenges, and uh, that story is also there. Any quick reflections uh, before I go to page 16? But I spent some time in India uh, uh, in November, and I thought they had the worst air quality over there. I was in a mask in India, in India. Oh yeah, India, Mumbai, Delhi. I mean, there are places. Mm. I spent some time in Delhi, and I thought they had the worst uh, air pollution. So I'm pretty surprised to hear that uh, Accra has actually joined that category. Uh, hopefully, we can resolve that very soon. Uh, let me take a quick stab on the meningitis issue. Um, mm. On the outbreak of this, I think it's quite concerning because if I recall, uh, meningitis is caused by bacterial infection or a part of it or a strand of it can be caused by uh, bacterial infection that can be quite severe and potentially life-threatening. Yeah. So it is my hope that the public will take this warning seriously and report to the nearest facility should they experience this uh, as we see the symptoms. I think though that eliminating or managing diseases like meningitis in Ghana, it requires a pointed and comprehensive approach that addresses the specific underlying causes and also the challenges. Right. I'm not a medical doctor here, but I hope that uh, there will be preventive measures that the medical experts can communicate to the folks. We also, we, we, we all, uh, also have to think about what is the prevention, right? Uh, we always say that prevention is better than cure. You know, the challenge I see here is that, Ben, if citizens will have to pay for testing and treatment, rest assured that not everyone with symptoms will report to the nearest uh, facility. Also, are there higher risk areas that we can focus prevention efforts on, such as populations at higher risk of uh, uh, contracting meningitis? We need to consider the implementing uh, uh, factors here, right? Targeted at intervention uh, to reduce the risk of infection and also enhance the access to uh, prevention and treatment services for the population. Right. In all of these though, I think we need to strengthen our healthcare system as a nation. I saw your documentary titled uh, Sick Hospitals and then it is heartbreaking. I don't know if you, all, all of the facilities or health facilities are well equip, equipped uh, to deal with an outbreak uh, uh, such as this one. Let, let's, 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 not, let's not talk about an outbreak, I beg you. Um, <laughs> and I'm saying that uh, with a lot of hope um, because we simply don't. In recent times, we had a conversation. I remember um, a CDD fellow uh, we had an interaction with. Uh, only about 10% of our medical facilities come pharmacies there's a statistic, have thermometers, something as basic as a thermometer, which they'll use to measure your temperature, okay? 10%, when it comes to, don't, don't go to incubators, defibrillators, ventilators, and all of that. I mean, these are things that you find that, that, that are basic in other parts of the world, not here. So don't even start to talk about if there were an outbreak because um, it wouldn't be a pleasant story. Let's, let's not even go there. Mm. And you see, that's concerning, right? I think we need to invest in this sector to provide uh, adequate infrastructure, you know, more well-trained doctors and nurses, uh, you mm. know, with good service condition and reliable su supply of essential medicines, like even paracetamol. There are some hospitals they did not have that when I saw that documentary uh, on Joy uh, TV. Then healthcare is not my area of strong expertise, but a little I know about preventing diseases like this a cause for collaboration among uh, government, uh, public, and the private uh, health care providers. And society as a whole need to align, you know, come together with efforts and shared resources to tackle this one. And then we need to continue to fund research facilities 
uh, if I remember correctly, uh, there was a place called Gucci, right? Mm. And other medical research institutions yeah. in the country to the help University develop cutting edge. Say that again? At the University of Ghana, Noguchi. Yeah. We need to invest in uh, these uh, uh, institutions to help develop uh, uh, tools and treatment options. Ghana is talented with the brains. And with adequate funding, I believe that we can find solutions and better protect our people. Right. Let's get into other stories and wrap uh, politics, page 17. I will not discriminate in development projects, uh, Mahama says uh, so. Whether an area voted for the NDC or not will, not will ensure that they get their share of the national cake towards the transformation of the country for the benefit of the citizenry. That's the thrust of what he says. But I've also learned to take what these politicians say with a grain of salt. Um, I know why he's saying this, because the president, for example, twice, once in Mepe, said, you people didn't even vote for me. Technically, we shouldn't be blah, 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 time. We, we remember that. And then the Akumfi one, uh, adding infamy upon if infamy or infamy to infamy that, look, um, you didn't vote for, is it Atu, Atukujo or something? Of the, I, that's, I believe, his name. He won in 2016. You didn't bring him back in 2020. And so that's why I've not. He said this openly, engaging some people from Ekumfi when it had to do with the former president, Atta Mills. So um, I guess, but I, I always say that nowadays I've become very wary of our politicians. Oh, but now to me, yeah, fine. But for now, the talk. Mm. Anyway, page five. Namibia's new president's warning after predecessor dies. Sad development there. As for that one, our very own Akufuado could tweet on it. I saw him, um, I saw a post by the, the, the president. Not that it's wrong, but there are things that happen in this country. And um, unlike back then when he was trying to be president, how he was often on social media nowadays, you wouldn't hear anything, even when the youth march up to the Jubilee House. Mm. Senegal Parliament to vote on election. Tyler shines as Nigeria stars miss out on Grammy glory. Um, South African music sensation Tyler, you know her song, Water. I've actually never listened to that song fully. I just get snippets of it. Um, has won the inaugural Grammy Award for Best African Music Performance with a viral global hit, Water, edging out Nigeria's burner boy, Davido Ayastar and Asake. The win has elicited excitement among Tyler's fellow South Africans, but ignited controversy among many Nigerians. Following the win, some Nigerians took to social media to express their surprise that Tyler, a relatively newcomer, a relative, uh, Daily Graphic, a relative newcomer to the African music scene, triumphed over the more seasoned Nigerian Afrobeat stars nominated alongside her. My Niger people, uh, we are like brothers, you know what's up. Um, Burner has won, Wizkid has won, uh, I mean, I know you expected Davido or Burner Boy to carry it. It can't always be their day. Plus, look at the great things Tyler did with this hit on, on the Billboard charts and all of that. You can't take that away from her. So while I've not fully listened to the song, I may not be a fan, but Charlie, it can't always be Niger, can it? I would like to end on this point because I'll go back to this. Echoas and the piss poor leadership. And if things go wrong, then... We start, oh, and why has there been a, a, a military incursion? Like I keep saying, I'll say it every time. I have seen war. So military incursions into democratic practice is a no, no, no for me, especially as a student of politics and international relations. But I keep saying, if you sit on your rear, your behind, and see constitutional coups happen and keep mum, then the other one will also happen. And that is my beef with our leaders in the sub-region. Hypocrisy. Barefaced hypocrisy. The story says, Senegal's parliament is meeting to consider the postponement of presidential elections announced by President Macky Sall, a move that has plunged the country into crisis. Monday's session is happening a day after a day of violent street protests in the capital, Dakar. The signs are on the wall. The writing is on the wall. In the capital, Dakar, during which at least one senior opposition figure was arrested and growing international concern. Lawmakers are voting on a proposal, Ghana for Muntio, to postpone the presidential poll previously set on for February the 25th for up to six months. The text before them would need the support of three-fifths of the 165-seat parliament to pass. Macky Sall, two-term president, just like Alassane Ouattara, President Okufuado's friend, who has gone for a third term, unprecedented. 
when Gbagbo had his own, we ousted him. Look at what Watara is doing. No one is talking about that. Now, Maki Sal wants to go for an unprecedented third term. It's constitutionally forbidden. He's tried to tweak the constitution. It's not necessarily worked. So now he wants to handpick his predecessor. The question is why? Why would he want to handpick? If not, I've spoken to this man before, Maki Sal. I've interviewed him before. So if there's something not, not right, I mean, if not for that, why would you want to handpick your predecessor? If you're clean, if there's nothing wrong anywhere. And for that process and other processes, they are postponing elections again from February the 25th for another six months. You see, people have already started protesting. But ECOWAS will be pimp. But let something happen there. Then you see them. Over to you, Doc, briefly, and then we'll get into other papers. Ben, uh, you, you, you touch on ECOWAS, you know, so let me actually mention quickly that I've been trying to follow the developments involving ECOWAS. Look, Ben, it's rather unfortunate uh, that the nations, Burkina Faso, Niger, and I know this is not a story that you just read, but I want to touch on this br briefly that we can move on, that these nations have decided to leave ECOWAS. And, you know, did, go ahead, Ben. Can you hear me, Ben? I can hear you. Please go ahead, Doc. Go ahead. Yeah. So I was saying there will most likely be impacts to regional cooperation and trade across the subregion. And I know uh, these three nations are consulting to determine if they should allow uh, Ghana and other West African countries to do business, right, to continue to do business in their respective countries. If they kick out Guineans and other West African traders, maybe they'll bring in the Rus Russians. Who knows? I'm just saying. But if you look at it carefully, all these three nations have something in common. They have been military takeovers, coups to replace uh, democratically elected governments with military governments in their countries. And the way power has changed hands in these nations is in direct contravention of the Charter of ECOWAS, which condemns all military coup and rather supports democracy where all leaders are elected through the democratic process. So my understanding is that these three nations have been suspended by ECOWAS because of these schools and because they have since not returned to civilian rule. It seems to me that this is an action of defiance than legitimate concerns about the principles of ECOWAS. So instead of finding solutions to return the nation to civilian rule, I think they decided to take the highway and abandon uh, the West African states uh, community entirely and take their, their destinies into their own hands, maybe counting on allies like Russia. Look, I am always an advocate for change and also questioning the status quo. Why would a president that has served two terms or, or already, why would he want to serve a third one or handpick uh, uh, his uh, successor? Mm -hmm. You know, just like you said. But by all means, Ben, the concerns of these three nations about ECOWAS possibly shifting from the principles of uh, its founding fathers and the spirit of Pan-Africanism this concern should be taken seriously and reviewed to ascertain uh, the veracity of what these three nations are claiming. But that said, you cannot convince me that you are Pan-African if you don't want African nations or people to trade in your country. <clears throat> that said, I think the role of ECOWAS is indispensable uh, to the stability of the continent, fostering regional integration and democratic uh, uh, processes across uh, uh, the West Africa subregion. But one of the goals of ECOWAS <clears throat> is to promote uh, regional ec economic integration right. among its member states. And that includes removing trade barriers, making custom procedures uh, consistent uh, across the region. Recently, our president, he announced that uh, the removal of visa entry requirements for other African countries. This, although it needs to be carefully impl implemented, it is in line with the aims of ECOWAS, which is a key benefit that the organization fosters. Then also, ECOWAS regions, uh, they, they, they foster that kind of a regional cooperation, right? right? And collaboration among its member states. It provides a platform for dialogue, negotiation, and also consensus building on various regional issues, including peace, security, uh, agriculture, infrastructure development, and environmental sustainability. 
Now, through collective action, Ben, member states can address uh, these common challenges. If you remember, there was something called ECOMOG. That is the Economic Community of West African States uh, Monitoring Group, which was a multilateral security forces created by ECOWAS for the militaries of member states uh, to collaborate and maintain peace and security in the region. A lot of Ghanaian soldiers were deployed on peacekeeping missions with uh, ECOMOG to places like Liberia and so on. So the role of ECOWAS in keeping peace and security in the region is critical in my opinion. Look, mm. all that I'm saying is this. We need to find a better way to resolve some of these. Instead right. of uh, 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 the nation say uh, we are leaving ECOWAS. The destiny of Africa must firmly be in the hands of Africans and decided by Africans only. Okay. Let's quickly get through the last uh, batch of papers and then we shall take it from there. The Ghanaian Times, danger looms across central congestion, worsens Kwame Nkrumah circles, CBD, hardest hit areas. Pedestrians, uh, traders, vehicles compete for space. And you know what I'm talking about if you go into central Accra. Uh, how, how we can even have a system like this, I don't know. But um, this is Ghana for you. Uh, is this where we're saying would make the cleaner city in Africa? I don't know. And I'm not necessarily targeting... President Kufuado and what he said. I'm targeting any administration that will come because administrations have come and gone and across Central and many parts of our country have remained w what they are. The hypocrisy of, you know, you have some foreign dignitary or president coming, then they clear the streets and everything, paint a few things here and there. Once the person is gone, ah, back to Batan. <laughs> Whom are we deceiving? Uh, thieves vandalize ECG transformers, steal copper windings at Nkumkrom and... Um, Interesting development uh, here, even our traffic lights. I met someone at church who's Ghanaian living in Canada, an elderly citizen. He said, I'm going through town. So many of the traffic lights are faulty. I told him, senior, well, he watches me. That's why he approached. I told him, look, we've spoken about this thing not less than 10 times within how many. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, even sometimes you have thieves go and steal those. Yes, uh, you have rats to some of the cabling. I mean, and it's also because of our sewage systems. It's a total mess. Lands Commission improves revenue by 12% in 2023. We did the story yesterday. Protects financial data from cyber attacks. That's according to the vice president. The Daily Guide, NSA director hot over 160K. And they don't come to make money. Yana to Mahama. Then OSP returns to Celia Dapai's money. I'll do the one on page three. The Public Accounts Committee of Parliament has ordered the immediate arrest of the Northern Regional Director and Accountant of the National Sports Authority. The two are alleged to have squandered over 160000 of an internally generated fund after they failed to pay the amount into the consolidated fund. And then the overlord of Dagbon, Yana Abubakari uh, II, Abubakar II, has cautioned the flag bearer of the National Democratic Congress, John Dramani Mahama, over his motive for seeking another term in office. According to the Yana, Former President Mohammed's quest for the presidency should not be about making more money for his family, but to leave a legacy. And the final story I'll look at, even as we talk about sports and people uh, not being able to account for internally generated funds. You know, we're talking about 8.5 million for the Black Stars and everything in between. 500 athletes to represent Ghana at the 13th African Games. And um, the Games scheduled to take place from March 8 to March 23 will witness Ghana's participation in events such as football, athletics, boxing, badminton, cycling, swimming, tennis, table tennis, and triathlon. I see the sports minister in there. But you see, we could mass up $8.5 million for the Black Stars. We have here, we say we are a boxing nation. We are this and that. Go and look into how much has been budgeted for these people. You will cry. Our thinking in this country, even God, God cry, I don't think he can save us. Uh, your final thoughts, and then we, we, we can get out of here. Yet they are being charged to win medals. <laughs> Dr. Dugby, we have, we have a minute. We have a minute to go. Let's go. Good. All of this, to me, is all about the corruption that our country and Africa as a whole we are facing, right? It's saddening as a Guinean to read about the nation's abysmal ranking on the uh, corruption perception in this. Our leaders have failed us when it comes to corruption. The level of proven corruption and alleged corruption that we keep hearing to be plaguing Ghana, I think is very, very uh, alarming. And while we expect our leaders to act in upright ways with integrity, especially when dealing with the resources of the nation, 
The bitter truth is some of them don't, right? These are corrupt, and some of them have seared consciences that they don't even have any regrets at all. So the point here is that we can't rely on these same leaders to tackle corruption in our nation. That is why I think the role of Ghanaians in fighting corruption is crucial and plays a very significant part in creating a transparent and accountable society. So here's a quick thought that we can uh, wrap th things up uh, over here. I think that there should be some kind of awareness creation, right, where citizens know their rights and responsibilities, and we get educated about the adverse impact of uh, corruption on society. One is the economic consequences, where growth is hampered because the necessary and allocated funds are diverted, right? The poverty and inequality it unleashes on the people. When resources meant for, say, uh, social welfare programs are diverted, the social injustices, environmental degradation, as we're seeing with illegal mining activities in Ghana. And we hear that some politicians are even granting aid and comfort to some of these uh, illegal operators in the country. Public health risk and even the very tenets of our society, the fabric of our democracy, right? These are all undermined when corruption runs rampant. The citizens need to be better educated on these adverse effects. That will be my last word, and I hope that we can uh, 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 survive this and come out of it as a nation stronger. Um, well, that's how we're going to have to cap off uh, the conversation uh, this morning. But thank you very much, Dr. Wisdom Dugbe. He is a finance analyst, and he joined the conversation. Just to clarify, I know someone may say, uh, oh, but he's saying even God can't help us. Uh, what I mean is, you know, God works hand in hand in conjunction with us. He can do things on his own. But Ghana, the way we're acting, we are not playing our part in spite of all the boons given by God. Anyway, right before we get into sports, this segment brought to you by Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic, and they're offering you free prostate screening, free fertility screening. That is, if you're a man, prostate, if you're a woman, fertility screening. Reach out to them at any of their branches here in Accra, Spintex, opposite the Shell Sign Board, Kumasi Kronomabwe here behind the Angel Educational Complex, the Stakradi Energy State, Tema Community 22, Tichiman Hanswa, and the Siaman Zuma. Their call lines 0244 867 068 and also 0274-234-321. End Point Homeopathic Clinic, bringing us to the end of the news review. Up next, we serve you sports. Do stay.